bookkeeping basics for beginners, bookkeeping fundamentals, intro to accounting, whatever you want to call it. Bookkeeping is the systematic process of recording, organizing, and managing a company's financial transactions. What does that mean? Let's talk about it. This video is going to be perfect if you are trying to start your own bookkeeping business, or maybe you just want to get a job as a bookkeeper, or maybe you're an office manager for a business owner and they want you to learn more about bookkeeping, or finally, maybe you're just a business owner and you want to understand bookkeeping fundamentals, bookkeeping basics. I have been doing bookkeeping for the past four years. I've taken almost a dozen college level accounting classes. I've been running my own bookkeeping business for the past four years. I have 70 clients. I do their bookkeeping for them. I work with QuickBooks Online. So I have a ton of experience. I'm going to share with you as much information as I possibly can in this video. Keep in mind, bookkeeping is not super interesting. So this video is going to be very boring. It's going to be styled like a college lecture, but this video is free. And if you're interested in becoming a bookkeeper, then this video has a ton of good information for you. I'm not going to be talking specifically about QuickBooks Online. A lot of bookkeepers use software like QuickBooks. I'm going to be teaching you bookkeeping fundamentals like debits and credits, double entry accounting, chart of accounts, income, expenses, assets, liabilities, equity. I'm going to get into all of those bookkeeping fundamentals or accounting basics. If you're trying to start your own bookkeeping business, I have a ton of resources that I made for people just like you. You have to check out the links in the description of this video. I have a full course, I have a free course, I have a ton of digital downloads, I offer one-on-one -on -one consultations, and I have a Facebook group, and so I have weekly meetings, so many other free resources and also paid resources that I made just for you. Okay, let's jump right into it. Let's talk about Bookkeeping basics, bookkeeping fundamentals, intro to accounting. So first of all, why is bookkeeping even important? This gives us financial visibility. Where's your money going? What are your spending habits? Are we aligned with the budget? These are questions that can be answered by having accurate and updated bookkeeping. You need to know where you've been so that you can know where you're going. Bookkeeping is the first step to finance and accounting in any business. It's the foundation for more advanced finances and accounting and taxes. Obviously, bookkeeping is super important for compliance. Income taxes, income expenses, net income. You need to understand what is your net income so that you understand how much am I going to pay in taxes. Then we have stuff like sales tax for all of your revenue. Some people need to pay sales tax. And then if you ever were to get audited by the IRS or your state government or other agencies, you need to be tracking your receipts. You need to have documentation. You need to have all of your bank transactions and credit card transactions neat organized that is what bookkeeping is all about for budgeting and planning how much how much did revenue increase month over month it would be impossible to answer that question if you didn't have bookkeeping maybe we need to hire a new employee you would have no idea if you didn't have financial statements and updated records do we need to increase our spending or maybe do we need to decrease our spending because our business is not doing as well as we thought it was Financial stability, obviously super important for every business. You need updated finances, financial statements to get a loan from a bank. The only way you're going to get a loan is if you have your tax returns and your profit and loss and your balance sheet. So to ensure financial stability of your business, you need cash. To get cash, so many people go to the bank for a line of credit or a loan. You're not going to get a loan if you don't have these updated financial reports. If you ever get audited by an insurance company, you're going to need to show your tax returns, your balance sheet, your profit and loss. Tax efficiency, super important. Every business expense has the potential to save your business 30% because it's a deduction, a tax write-off. So you want to make sure that you are accurately tracking all of your expenses. We have things like bank accounts, credit card accounts, loan interest, depreciation. There are so many different transactions that we have in a business, so you want to stay organized. Okay, that's kind of a broad overview of bookkeeping, what it is, and why it's important. Okay, now let's talk about double entry accounting. 
debits and credits, and how do they apply to bookkeeping? So first of all, what is double entry accounting? Let me just read straight from my notes. Double entry accounting is a systematic method of recording financial transactions that ensures every transaction has equal and opposite effects on two or more accounts. At its core, it follows the principle that for every debit, there must be an equal and corresponding credit. What the heck does that mean? Let's let's talk about it. A debit, a debit entry represents an increase in an asset or an expense account or a decrease in a liability or equity account. Debits are typically recorded on the left side of an accounting ledger. Credits are the opposite. A credit entry represents an increase in liability or equity account or a decrease in asset or expense accounts. Credits are typically recorded on the right side of an accounting ledger. The accounting equation. This is bookkeeping basics. This is fundamentals of accounting at its core. The accounting equation. Assets equals liabilities plus equity. If you look at your balance sheet, your assets are always going to equal the sum of your liabilities and your equity. Let me give you a couple examples. Let's say you have a business and you just make a sale. You just earn income. Somebody gives you cash. In this example, we're going to debit cash and credit income. You received $500, debit cash, increase the cash, credit income. We're increasing the income. On the opposite side, we just have an expense. So here we're going to debit the expense account, which might be, let's say, supplies and materials, and we're going to credit cash. This is the opposite. So we spend $200 at Walmart. So debit supplies, debit the expense, credit cash. We're spending cash. Maybe we just bought a truck. We're going to debit truck, which is an asset account, and we're going to credit cash. So whether we're, now let's say we buy the truck with a loan. This is a little bit different. Here, we're still debiting the truck, but instead of crediting cash, we're going to credit the loan account. So if we purchase a truck with a loan, we're going to debit truck, debit the fixed asset. We're increasing the amount of fixed asset and credit the loan. We're also increasing the loan account because remember, assets have to equal liabilities plus equity. So if we're debiting truck, that's an asset, and we're crediting cash, that's also an asset. So it has no effect on liabilities plus equity. We're debiting truck, crediting cash, increasing asset, decreasing asset by the same amount. If we don't pay cash and instead we use a loan, we're going to debit truck and credit liability. So we're going to increase the asset and increase the liability or the truck loan. Okay, now let's say this is another common example. We put personal money into the bank. So here we're going to debit cash, we're increasing cash, and then we're also going to increase equity in the form of owner's investment. So this is not income, this is equity in the form of owner's investment. We're taking our personal money, it's already been taxed from our W-2 job or somewhere else, and we're going to increase our cash, debit cash, credit equity, increase our owner's investment. Okay, so why is double entry accounting important? It ensures accuracy. If we always have two entries, a debit and a credit, we're always going to be 100% accurate. If we put it in the bank account, we gotta put it somewhere else. If it comes from a liability, we gotta put it somewhere else. There's always a corresponding account to ensure accuracy and traceability. Now we always know where the money's coming from. If we're increasing cash, it's either coming from an increase in sales or an increase in equity or a decrease in expenses. And then finally, financial statements. Having double entry accounting ensures that we have updated and accurate financial statements. We have the profit and loss and we have the balance sheet. And I'll talk about that maybe in this video, maybe not, depending on how long this video is. Hopefully this makes sense to you guys. I'm trying to look at my notes and also explain these bookkeeping fundamentals. I'm not sure how far I'm going to go. If you guys like this style of video, let me know. I'll make more of them. I could talk about bookkeeping fundamentals all day. I'm just not sure how interesting this stuff is. Okay, next, let's talk about your chart of accounts. So we need to learn the purpose and structure of chart of accounts. So let me just read my notes for you. Chart of accounts is a comprehensive listing of all the accounts, categories, and subcategories used in your business financial record keeping system. It's a structured framework that classifies and organizes financial transactions, making it easier to track and report on financial activities. What does that mean? The purpose of your chart of accounts is categorization. Every time you categorize a transaction, 
you are putting a transaction into a chart of account and then organization. So we categorize the transaction and now we have an organization of all of our transactions. This enables us to find and analyze transactions. We can either look at our chart of accounts or we can look at our general ledger or our income statement or our balance sheet. But having a, an organized chart of accounts enables us to search, analyze, find transactions. And then reporting, like I said, balance sheet, profit and loss, every line item on your profit and loss on your balance sheet, whether it's income or expenses, insurance, supplies, contractor labor, interest earned, depreciation, or on your balance sheet, assets, cash, savings accounts, truck, building, accumulated depreciation, prepaid expenses, or liabilities like credit cards and loans and lines of credit and accrued payables or equity, owner's investment, retained earnings, net income, owner's distributions, all of those are chart of accounts that show up on your profit and loss and your balance sheet. So we have liabilities, accounts payable, credit cards, loans, payroll liabilities. We have equity, owner's investment, owner's pay, income, sales, revenue, services, whatever you want to call income, expenses, rent, office supplies, utilities, job supplies, advertising, payroll wages. All of these are chart of accounts. Whenever we're setting up our chart of accounts, it all depends on how you want to name your chart of accounts. It doesn't have to be the same for every business. Every business is different. If I have a trucking company, their chart of accounts are going to be way different than a restaurant. Obviously, the trucking company doesn't have food and the restaurant probably doesn't have a ton of repairs and maintenance and vehicle insurance. So every company is different. There are a few standard chart of accounts, like the ones I just named, like there are some expense, like every company has insurance and office supplies and contractor labor and utilities and rent and advertising and marketing. There are some standard chart of accounts, but not every company is the same. Chart of accounts can be living and breathing, which means they can change and adapt with the business. If you don't have any credit cards right now, you might get a credit card next year. So you're going to have to add a credit card chart of account. Numbering. Some people want to assign account numbers to their chart of accounts. It's not required, but with bigger companies, more complex companies, numbers might be helpful. Account numbers might be helpful. And then you can have sub accounts for every chart of accounts. So we have parent accounts, perfect example, advertising and marketing. And then we might have a sub account underneath advertising and marketing. And maybe we'll have advertising and marketing. And then we'll have like online advertising or paid per click advertising or Facebook advertising, Google advertising or print advertising or TV and radio advertising. Advertising, you get the idea. It's all advertising, but it's underneath the parent account of advertising and it has sub accounts. Okay, I know I'm flying through this information and here's a ton of information, but I just want to let you guys know I do have a course that goes over all of these bookkeeping fundamentals and QuickBooks tutorials and so much more. If you want to check out the course, it's linked in the description of this video. I go into all of this information in much more detail. I'm going to talk about one more thing. I'm going to talk about one more thing, recording transactions accurately. So there's so many more steps to bookkeeping. There's, there's categorizing transactions, AKA recording transactions, which is this double entry debits and credits thing I've been talking about. There's recording transactions and then there's reconciling accounts and then there's generating financial reports. I'm not going to get into step two and step three. Maybe I will in the next video. Seriously, guys, comment below. Let me know if you like this style of video and I will make so many more of these types of videos. Like I said, I love talking about bookkeeping. So let's talk about recording transactions accurately. Best, best practices for recording financial transactions. All of the money your small business earns is income. Anytime you product sales, services provided, rent income, interest income, this is all revenue, income, sales. It needs to be reported 1000%. You cannot leave any of this stuff out. Even if somebody gives you cash, you're still technically required to report that as income, even if it never flows through your business checking account. Super important. You want to have documentation, invoices, receipts, bank statements, Excel spreadsheets. It doesn't matter where you have the documentation or where it comes from. It could be paper and pen. It could be an Excel spreadsheet on your computer. It could be on your Google Drive. It doesn't matter, but you want to have documentation. In the event of an audit, you need to have supporting documentation for all of your sales. And then you just need to know two things, really. The date 
and the amount. That's pretty much all you need to know. If you want to track your customers and your products and your services, that's fine. You can track all of that internally for your company, but at its core, you just need to know two things, the date of the transaction and the amount. And then you want to know the category, sales, revenue, services. You could just have one category for income. It's, it's much more simple than expenses. With expenses, you want to have more categories. But with income, technically, you could just have one category. All the money coming into my business is just sales or just revenue or just services, whatever you want to call it. Or you could have subcategories. Maybe you have a restaurant and maybe you have bar sales and then food orders and then merchandise. So maybe you want to be more specific and be more detailed with your sales. And then, like I said, your customer information. You can track all of your customers if you want. You don't technically really have to. I recommend probably a good practice. But if you want to track your customers, just the customer name, the customer's email, the customer's address, it's good to have all that information in your bookkeeping software. It's important for financial reporting. Obviously, you want to know how much money you made and then for tax compliance and then performing analysis on your company. Is my revenue increasing? Am I making more money? Am I making less money? Now for double entry accounting, this is the last thing I'll talk about three different types. We can debit the cash and credit income, or we can debit accounts receivable and credit income, and then debit cash and credit accounts receivable once we, we receive the cash. This is two separate things we're talking about here. Cash basis versus accrual basis. If we're just providing, if I'm, if I come over to your house and I mow your grass and I do it for 200 bucks, I mow your grass and you hand me $200. That's very simple, debit cash, credit income. But the other side, let's say I come over, mow your grass, and you don't pay me today, so I send you an invoice for $200. So I didn't receive the money yet. I'm still going to credit income, but instead of debiting cash, I'm going to debit accounts receivable. And then a week later, you send me $200 in the mail, and so I receive $200, but I need to do something with that accounts receivable. So now I'm going to debit cash for $200. I'm not going to touch income because that is already accounted for. I already have $200 of income on the books. So debit cash. Now, instead, we're going to credit accounts receivable. So first, we debited accounts receivable. And second, we credit accounts receivable basically to cancel out, zero out, wipe away the accounts receivable. So we debit AR, credit income, and then you pay me a week later and I debit cash and credit accounts receivable. That's it, guys. 18 minutes. Hopefully this video was helpful. If you have any questions, feel free to drop a comment. Subscribe to my channel. I'm making videos like this every single week, teaching you everything you need to know about bookkeeping, QuickBooks, marketing, sales, customer service. Check out all the links in the description of this video. I want to help you learn more about bookkeeping so you can start your own bookkeeping business and make thousands and thousands of dollars.